Welcome to this week's Concurrency Tech Insights. This week we're talking about cloud assessment and migration. I am Nathan Lesnowski, Concurrency's Chief Technology Officer. We have some great guests lined up this week. We're so glad that you're here with us. Let's introduce them. First off, we have Duncan Lindquist. Duncan is a longtime Concurrency member. He is the practice manager of our cloud data center and DevOps practice. Welcome, Duncan. Thanks, good to be here. And not but, la not but last here, we have uh, Sean Lawrence, who is a cloud solution architect in the same practice, cloud data center and DevOps. Sean has been a long time architect in this space, very experienced, looking forward forward to hearing a little bit about his take on cloud assessment and migration today. Welcome, Sean. Thank you, Nick, glad to be here. Awesome, so let's get right in. So we're going to be talking about cloud assessments and the cloud assessments inside the context of migration and planning for your budget. Some things we'll be covering, why are companies doing it in the first place? You know, what's the point in this particular economy at this particular point in the evolution of our data centers? Why are companies doing cloud assessments? Why are they thinking about this as a strategic imperative as they move into their next year? Also, how are they comparing? You know, when people are companies are doing our cloud assessment right now, why not only are they doing them, but what are the results that they're receiving from those cloud assessments? How are they comparing against the cloud environment and the on-premise environment? Even what metrics are they using to compare? So we'll go through what companies are looking at as they look to make certain types of decisions. And then finally, we'll talk about what is involved in readiness and roadmap. What does it mean to have a cloud environment that is ready to execute on the roadmap that you define coming out of a cloud assessment? What does it look like for a company to be prepared to be able to take those next steps? And then next week, we want you to be aware that we're doing our following webinar on organizational change management. We're gonna be talking about how companies are thinking about these major changes, especially the roadmaps we're talking about today, in the context of how it changes the way that our organization thinks about its team and the consumption of technology. So there's looking at say, adopting new cloud technology. How does it relate to what an organization might do to make sure that cloud technology is consumed appropriately from an IT organization or from the rest of the business? All right, enough about that. Let's move into talking about cloud assessments and migration. So the first thing we wanna start talking about is what are other companies doing in the cloud assessment space? Why are they doing this in the first place? One of the things we want to make sure you have a good understanding of is that every business is somewhere on a cloud maturity curve. They're somewhere from on-premise, running a legacy data center, thinking about moving to the cloud, but really haven't done so yet. And they're struggling to enable the business to be able to leverage the cloud all the way up to a fully integrated technology business. Let's think about what the differences are there. It, the companies that are sitting down in this, this legacy space on the lower left-hand side, what they're doing is they're in a position where they're leveraging an on-premise data center, really very much the way that we've thought about it for 20, 30 years now. And they have a highly connected on-premise way of thinking about the world. Their data center is the epicenter of how they deliver technology to the rest of their business. But they're struggling to allow the business to leverage modern cloud technologies especially struggling to be able to be agile enough for an organization to be able to respond. As you move up the maturity curve, you see the business starts to emerge. You see where it says legacy plus, the business starts to emerge. And even though IT may be stagnant and may be continuing to run a legacy data center, the business is starting to say, I need to use this. And whether IT is open to that idea or not, I'm gonna start consuming from the cloud, maybe even with my own organizational budget within my business unit, I'm gonna start consuming from the cloud, positioning new services, starting to build new services that might be interesting to the business going forward. But it's done somewhat around the context of what the on-premise data center is doing. The next step from this is the idea of an operationalized cloud. The idea that an organization is running a data center in an operationalized way, allowing the business to be able to take advantage of the public cloud as well as take advantage of its on-premise environment. Operationalized cloud means I'm ready to consume new workloads. It's starting to build a partnership between the business and a cloud-ready IT organization. On top of that operationalized cloud, you see the building of a streamlined product development organization that leverages the cloud. And then the movement into the idea of 
being a true innovation differentiator. We've done webinars in the past talking about how the most effective businesses, especially at this time, are the ones that are differentiating their business via technology as a disruptor in the way that they engage with their competitors and in their market. That's built on these foundations of an operationalized cloud and a competent product development organization. But then finally, the movement into the fusion of technology fully into the business. The idea that the business itself is a technology organization. It moves from being potentially just a manufacturing organization to a software and services organization that leverages hardware and manufactured products. You can see this maturity that's different from what, you, what this business started at. And we'll be talking through today how our assessment and the conversation that we'll be having is based on moving through some of these different steps and starting to even just get a picture of what it means to be able to move into a public cloud environment. One of the things that we see organizations thinking about is what does a typical cloud program look like for my organization? And you'll see in the following conversations we have how bits and pieces of this light up as we think about what a cloud assessment does. Oftentimes, people have started somewhere down the road in the cloud, like we talked about in the previous slide, where they've started parts of the business, pockets of the business have lit up aspects of the cloud, and IT in a sense is catching up. And the pressure and the position and the movement right now in the market is toward understanding that the cloud is going to be a much more capable place to be able to execute on modern workloads. So one of the first things that you see here is executing on a, a cloud assessment to be able to understand the picture and movement from that cloud assessment into following activities such as building up a foundation, an Azure MVP, a cloud MVP of this environment the movement of that into true app rationalization and building into migration or enablement work streams. So we'll talk about how those get defined as we ask some of the questions today. So let's move into asking uh, Sean, our first guest, what are the patterns of adoption tied to cloud assessments? Sean? So yeah, there's a variety of you know ways that people go about adopting the cloud. Um, one of the primary means that we you know we try to focus on with the the assessments is to really start talking about what are some of the foundational elements of the cloud, and we'll be talking a little bit about the cloud adoption framework in a, in a little while. But uh, basically, you know, really starting to establish you know a good governance and topology foundation is key to really being able to drive an extensible, reliable and well-disciplined, you know, uh, footprint in the cloud. Um, other things that are, you know, points of consideration are, you know, really starting to draw in, you know, a DevOps, you know, platform. You know, um, DevOps is not only, you know, the tools itself, but, you know, the practices that go along with them. So, but as you're moving to, you know, towards Azure and the cloud in general, you want to have a better approach to how you're going to be deploying things, you know. You want to be able to establish, you know, your topology, leveraging things like infrastructure as code. Uh, we use Terraform a lot within, with our clients. Uh, so, but that allows you to sit down and overall, you know, landing zone that, again, we'll be talking about in a bit. But being able to go through this sort of process of, you know, enabling the business, enabling technology, you know, being able to drive business input um, allows us to start, you know, leveraging that underlying foundation to really establish an analysis platform and an app factory model that allows for migrations and modernization to occur. So that once we start going through that process, um, we're able to really establish, you know, what are the design patterns? What are the practices? How do we really drive innovation and excellence throughout the process? And how do we really enable technology and the business to really come together and fuse? Um, so, and from there, once you you know continue that journey through the cloud, you're able to leverage the capabilities of Azure and really start driving things like data modernization, so that you know you can start allowing the business to really drive drive better um, insights and um, you know processes going forward, so that they're able to continue to evolve what they're doing, you know, and become truly business aligned with you know technology and the business that Nate was referring to earlier. And so some of the patterns that we see, you know, we've created a, an overall approach, you know, uh, the assessment that we're discussing today is obviously, you know, fundamental to that. So we go through an entire process, um, you know, through data collection, you know, the rationalization, analysis, visualization, which we'll be diving to a bit later. Um, but then, you know, from there, we continue to leverage the, you know, 
the data and insights throughout that process so that we're going through design and planning you know what are, what are the migration workloads going to look like you know what kind of design patterns do we want to leverage what are the you know the service catalog tools that we want to leverage um, then we go throughout building that process you know so we create the infrastructure's code assets we deploy that landing zone we begin for governance and organizational change management through a sound communication strategy we develop testing protocols so that everything that's getting deployed is doing so in a thoughtful and you know tested uh, process so and then from there we're able to you know enable that migration and modernization capability and you know uh, stand up the app factory and so that we go through this wave planning scenario so that you know what's going up to the cloud is going to be done in such a fashion where you know we've understood the priority we've understood the dependencies we've understood you know how this is going to have a uh, business impact so that we're able to you know communicate uh, effectively through you know the organizational organizational change management process and as we go through we're able to sort of check things off as we go through and then you know provide you know demonstrate the the value back to the business as we continue to go through this process and this is a very sort of IT out picture associated with the assessment and structural creation of a operationalized cloud environment, right, Sean? So like this would merge up with what the business is doing? That's correct. Yes. So we would obviously, you know, try to, one of the ways that we actually try to leverage the, the dashboards going forward throughout this process is to align it to quarterly business reviews. So, you know, every you know every quarter we can sit back down with the dashboard and start talking through you know what have we done what have we achieved where do we need to go you know what has changed you know what have we learned through this process so that we're you know again continuing to align to those business cadences aligning to those business needs and you know really being able to enable the business to you know act in the way that it needs to awesome so duncan let's talk a little bit about the assessment specifically that companies go through what do companies usually learn from the assessment planning exercises? That's a great question. So we have a, a good output that comes in the form of a Power BI dashboard that's gonna break it down in all the different ways they might wanna see it. Um, this, this slide here is actually showing some of the ways that we commonly split it up. So you can see by application, by different environments that you might have, by locations, by servers, but it's gonna allow us to kind of slice and dice that information from a budget perspective and see how much is this application costing me or how much is this data center costing me or how much does prod, dev, test cost me and some of those things. And that allows us to even kind of break some of those down even more into, you know, with dev, what if we ran it, you know, 12 by five or 12 by seven in our in our cloud environment where it will spin those up and down and what would those costs look like? So we can really start breaking down the costs in a way that's, that's easy to see it. <clears throat> and then the other thing that we've got inside here, this is actually a, a cost of ownership that, of a um, the current on-prem and hardware software costs. So we can take a look at the, not just what are the costs going to be in the cloud, but what are the costs that you currently have and split those up a little bit. So you can start to understand, here's what it's costing me now, and here's what it's going to cost me to move it up in the cloud. It allows us to give us some of that comparison. Um, the other thing that's going to show us is <clears throat> what is ready to move to the cloud and kind of what might need to be right size. So here we can see the operating systems and what's ready, what's not <clears throat> to be moved into Azure. If there's opportunities, you know, uh, replatform with SQL or some of those other things and then just understanding the costs around all those things and are they running at the right levels that they're supposed to be. How are they defining readiness Duncan when they're thinking about you know, what kind of workload is ready versus what workload is not ready? Yeah so what it's what it's doing is making sure that the machine or the system is on the compatible software in order to migrate up to the right version of Windows or the right version of SQL you might have to make some jumps to get there as well um, if it's ready or it's not a supported operating system. So it's kind of showing us some of those things. And the great part about Power BI, you're seeing the high level here, but we can drill down and see the individual machines and why they're not ready and really attack those pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. I like how you've broken down the total mm -hmm. compute costs versus storage costs in the, in the graphics as well. Yeah, it helps get an understanding of where a lot of your costs are coming from. And as we drill down into the individual applications, we can actually start looking at what our needs are around those things as well. Awesome. So that's actually what this slide is showing is, is we're starting to do this assessment. You know, a lot of people see these huge Azure costs and they're trying to figure out what their, their costs are going to be. And they're not looking at a lot of different factors that come in, in with that. So this slide really breaks that down on the top uh, row there. What we're seeing is as is cost. So this is if you were to just take it and move it into Azure without changing anything about your environment. So they'll get what that is. And then there's three different licensing models around Azure. So there's no reserve, which is you pay it as you go. So you pay for the resources as you use them. 
And then you can also reserve uh, resources for one year or three year time frames, and you get a huge discount if you do that. So a lot of people don't look at that right up front. And then if you look at the bottom row, that's actually breaking it down to a uh, right sized environment. So what the tools would do is give us information about the computers. And as we're moving into the cloud, there's no sense in having, you know, eight times the memory capacity that you need for that application. We can see it's running at, you know, two to 4% for the last you know, six months or two months or four weeks, whatever we, we look at in our time frame. And this will take it down to what that right size environment would actually cost us if we moved to Azure. And the nice part about the cloud is we don't need to have those extra resources, right? We can scale if, if there's a scenario where we need those or have it auto scale if we hit certain thresholds. But this actually gives us a cost price where this is what it's actually gonna cost us to move to Azure. And then again, across those different licensing models. So you, you can kind of see just from this one slide, you know, this isn't taking into account yet replatform or refactor, but just this one slide will show you that there's a huge variance in costs about, by the way you're planning and going into the cloud. So planning and, and getting the right plan of going into the cloud is gonna change your price. In this case, for this client was almost $160,000. We've seen a lot larger, some smaller ones, but there can be a significant price difference there. You mentioned that that's especially one of the things that people find by doing this is they've had, they've done assessments before, but it's been by punching the numbers into the Azure calculator and saying, oh, well, my on-premise environment is a lot more expensive, less expensive because they're comparing against existing costs or what have you. Instead of looking at reserve costing, right sizing, and then the understanding that you can right size a cloud environment and save money, whereas the on-premise environment, that's not possible. Like you have the hardware you bought, you're stuck with it. Yep, and our assessment will even go even deeper and look at things like your dev environment and we'll talk about what applications could maybe run 12 by five or 12 by seven in those different environments. So we can start even breaking the cost down more because as you're moving to the cloud, you wanna be you know, strategic about how you're doing it, making sure you're doing things the right way so that you're being more cost effective. You can even break this down based on application by application basis, right? Yep, yep, you can get this, this is on, on all of costs because it gives us a little uh, bigger numbers to look at here, but yeah, we can break this down application by application. Awesome. Thanks, Duncan. Mm -hmm. So, Sean, what is the typical approach for an assessment? How are companies slicing this, dicing it, going after it? What are the structural approaches to this? So, basically, how we start this off is we go through a data discovery process, and we try to run everything sort of in a line. You know, we, obviously, data discovery has to take, you know, sort of a front seat it starts off you know a few days before we really start delving in but we we you know in sort of the the notion of being agile we try to keep things aligned um and work these things through you know a two to four week process um obviously you know often it'll take five to six weeks companies have you know their own competing interests and you know while these things are important initiatives we've got to sort of you know deal with the realities of everyday business but basically what it breaks down to is sort of a, a three-fold approach where we rationalize the data that we're you know gathering, uh, establishing context with the organization, really talking through, you know, okay, we have a list of servers, but now we really need to understand better, you know, what are those things attached to? But then that allows us to really analyze the data and as Duncan was saying, really go deep on it, really get a better understanding of like, you know, what is the what is the nature of these this application or any given application? You know, when we start looking at these things from an environmental perspective, you know, what are we really seeing? You know, how are these things, you know, in terms of overall resource consumption looking, you know, where are we over provisioned? And typically they always are, you know, at least by 50% on storage, which is a huge cost sink. Uh, but really gaining an understanding of like, where can we really achieve, you know, transformative effects through the application of cloud technologies. And then we're able to visualize those through the dashboard that we just showed, you know, and really start slicing and dicing that information, um, getting a better understanding, you know, being able to use the, the various dashboards to, you know, demonstrate, you know, where some of these pitfalls are, where some of these gaps are, and really start to show like, you know, why Azure would be a good choice to help, you know, remediate a lot of these concerns and really demonstrate, you know, why things like, um, you know, scaling up and scaling down as, you know, again, Duncan was saying with, you know, non-production environments to say, look, you know, you could go five by eight, you could go five by 12, um, or seven by 12, but you could also, you know, with the application of things like Azure DevOps, you can entirely, you know, just stand things up dynamically, you know, have almost a self-service approach to, you know, dev and test environments, and you can really start talking about what those things mean. And then we'll take all those insights, you know, we'll develop these scenarios and present them back to, you know, our, our executive, you know, founders or uh, sponsors rather, uh, which um, we'll talk about in a little bit here. So, 
any given approach, you know, any engagement, we'll, you know, start off with a kickoff where we start, you know, talking through, okay, here's the data discovery tool that we're leveraging. Here's what we're going to need from the given organization. Um, you know, here's the worksheet that we're going to be using because, you know, and along with the data that we're gathering, we're also trying to achieve both, you know, that technology and business context. So we're going to talk through things like, you know, okay, what applications are these servers associated with? Um, what is the business's tolerance for some of these things? What environments are they in? You know, again, so that we can, you know, slice and dice these things accordingly. Who are some of the owners? You know, sometimes that could be specific people. It could be, you know, business units. It could be IT itself. Um, so we just try to get a better understanding of that. So that as we go through, we're continually rationalizing, you know, the data and putting it in the proper context. And then that allows us to calibrate the data that we're, you know, showing through the dashboards. So that, again, we're going through the scenario-based approach, slicing and dicing them, uh, developing an overall story that we capture in a PowerPoint deck that, you know, will go through a variety of different areas, you know, both the insights that we're capturing, some what some of the readiness concerns are, what a potential roadmap could look like and what, you know, follow-up activities will be. So that we're then able to show that back to the executives who have, you know, sponsored this program and that, you know, to provide them the business insight and technology insight and, you know, financial insight that they're going to need to make their case to, you know, back to the business. Exactly. And a comprehensive approach helps to clear up some of the perhaps misconceptions that existed in the business in terms of what they thought the cost of the cloud was or how even quickly you can move to the cloud. And uh, identify the workloads that can move more easily and the ones that might not move as easily enough, right? Absolutely. And yeah, being able to leverage this data, we're able to look at, you know, what would be a good pilot migration? What would be good proof of concepts to really spin up? You know, what are some of the pain points, you know? Um, often case, you know, we'll start looking at things like, you know, disaster recovery as a service, you know, which is great because then we can actually talk about how Azure Site Recovery, otherwise known as ASR, can actually be used as a migration tool itself. So, you know, it's multi-purpose. So you, you can start stepping into, you know, something like a DR POC. And then the great news is that, hey, these things that we're starting to protect, we could actually start migrating those, you know, tomorrow effectively. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So to break this down, you know, between the, the, the rational, rationalize, analyze, and visualize. So basically, you know, again, we take that worksheet, we really start carving these things up into applications, understanding the various functions. So, you know, there may be types of applications. So that's very useful, you know, if we're gonna start looking at SQL or, you know, any data you know based system or you know what is being used as a web system so we can actually start breaking those things out in terms of more of an, an overall cloud operating model but then we're able to you know derive those targets you know again like you know do we want to refactor this do we want to rehost this you know leveraging the the five hours from gardner um and then from there deriving you know these various different insights we can start you know taking a first crack at wave planning you know like what are some of the first things we're going to want to move what will be some of those pilot you know um migrations or modernization efforts. Yeah, especially wave planning. That's a really important step that we've understood for these migrations, right? Is it, to what extent do you stack applications together? How fast, how slow the organization of the waves and the communication back to how spend may or may not increase at certain times? Yeah, that's that's the great thing is you know you get you get a better understanding of what these concurrent costs will look like moving forward so that you're then able to sort of adequately plan, you know, in terms of like, you know, that conversion from CapEx to OpEx so that you know you can really let your you know your financial folks know how we need to break this out, how we need to go through the proper financial planning. So, you know, it really isn't just a technology operation, it really is, you know, a financial and business operation as well. Yeah, great point. How about analyzing? So again, you know, as we were saying earlier, you know, then we're able to really say like, look, we're, we're looking at these things as an aggregate. We're noticing that, you know, you're 50% you're over provisioned on storage, you know, you're 30% over provisioned on cores, you know, you're 40% over provisioned on RAM. And we can really start helping them drive some, you know, decision-making processes and enabling, you know, the people in, in these um, assessments to really go back to their application owners or their business stakeholders and really have some artful conversations. You know, like, hey guys, look, I know that, you know, over the years we've been, you know, throwing all these uh, you know, resources at this application, but here's what it really needs. And they can start talking about, you know, the, the peaks and cadences of, you know, like what does their annual look like? You know, it's like, look, we provisioned this particular application because we know that there's three points in the year where it really spikes, but we could really, you know, make this more suitable to what you really need and help, you know, drive down costs. And then, you know, start talking to their, you know, their application owners and business stakeholders about, you know, okay, here's what readiness looks like, you know, in terms of this particular application. And, you know, 
what are we going to need to do to remediate to get this to the cloud? So they, they, they have a really thoughtful approach. So that's not just, you know, trying to shoehorn everything into the cloud, but really understanding what it's going to take so that, again, it's, it's an effective approach. It's a remediated approach and people understand like what the, you know, the backlog is going to look like to get that thing to the cloud so that we're understanding those risks, both from an operational, but also, you know, how it would impact the business as we move forward. Are companies shocked by how much they waste in their on-premise environment? Yeah, <laughs> they really are. Um, overall, the surprise comes mostly from the, the the amount. You know, they understand that you know their their application owners have been asking for more resources over the years just because you know it's either use it or lose it all the time. But again, mm -hmm. that's what the, the cloud enables. And then finally, um, you know, visualizing. So. Again, through that process, we're able to develop these dashboards, really start telling a story, you know, really understanding what are the resources it's going to take as a result of, you know, this process. You know, who are we going to need within the organization? How are they going to need to be reskilled? What are the efforts, you know, over for overall onboarding and offboarding? You know, so, you know, onboarding meaning, you know, like in order to really establish that, you know, hub and spoke model we were talking about earlier, and we'll talk about more in detail in a little bit. Um, and what is it going to take to get, you know, an app, any given application into the cloud? who is going to be, you know, need to be upskilled from there, you know, and then how do we really work with our application owner community to really drive adoption? You know, how do we, you know, what is, what are the carrots we're going to provide to them and then present back to them what that real level of effort is going to be and you know, what, what do we need from them so that we're able to develop this overall application, you know, modernization and migration framework so that, you know, we're able to move forward, forward accordingly in a, you know, in a responsible and you know, repeatable fashion. You know, do customers have concerns about timeline? I mean, just real quickly to walk through week one through four and the relationship to their time investment. So yeah, initially that's one of the biggest concerns and they're often shocked when you're like, look, this is a full week process. Obviously, you know, again, like I said, sometimes it goes off to five to six weeks, but when you really start looking at it, you know, what is the real, you know, uh, time commitment here? It, it's it's a number it's a matter of hours for you know a, a variety of different people and when they see this kind of slide they're like oh okay this is great I I thought this was going to be way more involved but mm -hmm. you know we're able to really you know help drive them through this process and you know they always come out happy. Great point. Awesome. So we have about three minutes. I want to make sure that we take a little, little bit of time here, Duncan, and just walk through what it means to have a cloud adoption framework compatible environment that you're onboarding these workloads and resources into as you decide to start accelerating your migration. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So as we start, you know, we finish our assessment and we're starting to look at moving these things to the cloud. We understand now what we want to move and kind of some of the, the business values that we're going to be getting out of that. It's really making sure that upfront we're doing things the right way as we move to the cloud. We talked about infrastructure as code, there's governance, um, a lot of different pieces we're going to need to take into account. And we want to make sure we have that all set up before we just start moving pieces to the cloud. So you see kind of this is the cloud adoption framework from the, the Microsoft perspective here, right? They're defining their strategy, they're planning, getting ready, and then they're migrating. But I think the important part is kind of on the bottom there. They've got to govern and manage. I think these are the places where people aren't ready. They just start moving to the cloud. So really getting your governance in place. And, you know, what does that mean? It's what do my management groups look like? What do my subscriptions look like? <clears throat> How do I contain things in resource groups? And, you know, what are my tagging structures? So, um, you know, I need stuff for my cost management. I need to understand my data classifications. You know, we can control role-based access through there. Um, what do those things look like? And then what are my DevOps processes as we go through that too, right? So how am I deploying this infrastructure as code? And, and what does that look like? How do I get process in there to make sure that the security and governance is in place right from the start? So we talk about linting and policies and some of those things. So really getting that that landing zone, as you would call it, ready for how you deploy applications. And then at that point, we build out a plan, you know, of how you're either going to take an existing application, kind of a brownfield, and move that into Azure. So what does that plan look like? So you can onboard application teams one at a time and start getting them used to using Azure and, and moving their application to Azure, maybe even looking at refactory platform. And then <clears throat> the other one is the greenfield is if we have a net new, how are we going into the cloud with that? And how do we onboard our application teams into that? So it's taking a look at those different things. And then this slide is showing kind of the, the main pieces of that is, is we take a look at our subscriptions, our network, our provisioning process, um, all the different services that we might want to use. So, you know, I talked about the governance and security. We also want to make sure we have things like Security Center, um, Azure Sentinel, uh, Log Analytics, all those things turned on and used in the right way, right? Those are great services that give us a lot of data. 
you want to make sure you're utilizing the right way because otherwise they're going to give you a lot of cost, right? So making sure you have those things set the right way. And then the right yeah, test. Saying, how hard can this be, right? And you're like, well, it's actually quite a bit. Yeah, if you just turn on log analytics, you're going to get yourself in trouble. If you actually scope it to what you're trying to do, you get some great information. And then you can start looking at things like, you know, Power Automate and those tools to even um, fix those issues as they come up. And then, you know, test testing and testing and testing are all, all big things as we go through our deployment models. And then having that plan for migrate, Sean talked through the wave plannings, but just how do we migrate and really getting that plan for how do we onboard our application team and move them into that environment? How do we decide if we're going to refactor, replatform? How do we monitor the application? Having that whole flow of how we do that uh, laid out so it's really easy to onboard application teams. I think a lot of people start moving applications to the cloud. They're not thinking about, we need to train our application team. How are we going to monitor and even learn from this so we can continue to improve from a cost perspective, right? Getting all those pieces in with that migration. And then even a lot of the times it's, we should refactor, replatform, move to Kubernetes or, um, you know, Azure apps or anything, of those types of services. Awesome. Thank you, Duncan. Mm -hmm. All right. So next steps. That was a lot of great content. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Duncan. We would love to talk a little bit more about your cloud assessment and your migration. So we would love to set up a one-on-one -on -one discussion specifically around that idea. Next week, we're going to be talking about organizational change management. Join us for that. Don't forget to see our videos and blogs on concurrency.com. And again, thank you for Duncan and Sean for taking the time to walk through these concepts today. We hope it was valuable for you. It was a great conversation. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Nate.